spoiler alert, not the best use for a massage gun. Massage therapists have all sorts of funky tools and toys in their clinics, from the sharp and pointy needly kind to the foamy and tubular rolly kind. But there hadn't really been much in the way of true development in massage tools until, well, someone looked at a power tool and thought, I wonder what that feels like. According to the interwebs, that someone was Dr. Jason Worsland, chiropractor, founder of Therabody and creator of the Theragun brand. Dr. Worsland took power tools from shed to clinic over the period of 2008 to 2011. Now there are tons of the things from all sorts of brands making all sorts of interesting claims for why you should drop up to 500 pounds on this high-tech vibrator. But fear not, because the word science is sprinkled liberally throughout the marketing. According to Dr. Worsland, it all comes down to the frequency and amplitude of the vibrating head and the torque that can be generated by the handheld motor. What it is, is less clear, beyond the Therabody tagline of helping people feel better naturally. So instead, allow yourself to be won over by the endorsements of the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, Maria Sharapova and Sir Mo Farah. If they use it, completely without sponsorship, obvs, it must work, right? So in this video, I'm going to take a look at the science used in Theragun's marketing and then dive into some informed discussion of that science. In particular, tissue fluid changes and blood flow increases, how Dr. Worsland seems to be rather inventive with his analysis of papers, and sleep improvements. Consider this like a product review to help you decide whether to spend up to £550 for what is essentially the offspring of a Bosch hammer drill and a rampant rabbit. In researching this video, I decided to take one for the team by signing up to Therabody University and paying for their Theragun for Licensed Massage Therapist course. Top tip for everyone else, don't bother. As a sample of the hilarious advice from the course, try double Theragun applications. Yes, the advice is to drop a grand for greater time efficiency. It is more accurate to say that the mechanisms of the treatment are better described as percussive, a combination of vibratory and pressure stimuli. In fact, this point is made by Therabody during the course, repeatedly. They really want you to know that percussive therapy is unique and there's science to say so. So, science. Well, basically there is no research to back up any of the claims that relate specifically to percussive therapy. To Therabody's credit, they claim to have 20 plus academic studies currently being undertaken in seven institutions. 20 plus. Why not just say 21? Presumably these studies are funded by Therabody and so there is an inherent bias, but power to them for spending some money on this stuff. Instead, their reference list at the moment covers work separately performed on vibration and pressure, the vast majority of which is the work studying the concept of self-myofascial release. Indeed, the only reference in their list that includes percussive work is an abstract-only presentation from a poster session, meaning that it cannot be properly reviewed. Not that the reported results are really much to concern ourselves with, as I'll come to in a moment. So what does Therabody claim? They start well, pointing out that there are both physiological and neurological responses with both local and global effects. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos or heard me talk on massage and other manual therapies, you'll know I'm very much in favor of neurological explanations. In particular, where shifting the balance of activity from the sympathetic to the parasympathetic nervous system can positively influence pain, joint range of movement and recovery essentially moving from fight or flight to rest and digest. But in essence, there doesn't seem to be any specificity in how someone achieves this. Rather, it's entirely subjective and individual as to what feels good. Not that this is how any company trying to sell you something would present the information, of course. Their product is always going to be the best for everyone. Unfortunately, the non-specific neurological effects are not enough for Therabody. Where's the fun in positioning yourself as just one of many pleasant feeling novel stimuli on the market? Instead, we go immediately off the rails by referring to direct physiological effects and completely failing to demonstrate how any of these effects are clinically relevant. For example, much is made about the idea of moving fluid around between the layers of connective tissue within the body. In manual therapy, this is not a new concept. This movement of specifically hyaluronic acid between fascial layers is the basis for most of the vibration therapy research referenced by Therabody. However, in their sources are firstly in vitro, secondly, using mouse or pig fascia, and thirdly, bear no resemblance to everyday human movement. Yes, there may well be a change in mechanical stiffness of tissues as a result of fluid movement. Is the movement of fluid due to percussion therapy more significant than that achieved by, you know, moving your own muscles? 
Hell no. So, doing their homework for them, I took a look into locally applied vibration therapies, and specifically the work into the fluid mechanics of hyaluronic acid. I've emerged even more confused by Therabody's claims. Much of the conjecture around vibration therapy increasing tissue glide and range of motion are based on the assumption that it results in a better distribution of this lubricating hyaluronic acid. Work studying behavior of this key component of the extracellular matrix indicates that hyaluronic acid viscosity increases as its concentration increases, resulting in stiffness. So spreading it around a bit kind of makes sense. Reduce the concentration and it will be a little bit less gluey. But it's hyaluronic acid's behavior as a non-Newtonian fluid that is important for cushioning impact and helping with force transmission through the musculoskeletal system. Rapid cyclical deformation of non-Newtonian fluids results in a rapid increase in viscosity. Think about rapidly stirring a corn flour and water mix. It gets harder, right? Hyaluronic acid solutions, such as those found in the extracellular matrix, exhibit these viscoelastic properties. In other words, they stiffen when vibrated. So quite how vibration therapy can be justified as to increasing the gliding of fascial tissues, I'm not entirely clear. Furthermore, I cannot find any evidence in support of Dr. Verzum's claim that percussion therapy elicits the same responses as both pressure and vibration therapies, but that the concurrent nature of the application results in a larger and longer lasting effect. Not only that, but during the course, it appears that Dr. Wurzland completely misinterprets the results of the 2019 poster session abstract, claiming it shows that percussion therapy has an effect on fluid distribution and vibration therapy did not. Given that the study was a comparison between two percussion therapy brands, Theragun and Hypervolt, I'm not sure how he can come to this conclusion. Let's move on and discuss blood flow the increase of which is often reported as a benefit of any manual therapy. This is one of the aspects studied in the 2019 poster session abstract referenced by Therabody. Despite there being a well-established protocol to measuring blood flow velocity in the quadriceps using ultrasound, this study decided to use thermal imaging, equating a change in skin temperature with a change in blood flow, which means we're already hampered when trying to make comparisons. But as this does not seem to have stopped Therabody from using the source to back up their claims, I won't let it stop me attempt to put it into perspective either. The poster session abstract reported a roughly 1.7 degrees centigrade increase in skin surface temperature that peaked between 3 and 8 minutes post treatment and had returned to normal by 12 minutes. Brilliant. So what? Actual blood flow velocity has been measured pre and post use of a foam roller on the quads and I'm going to have to roughly equate foam rolling with massage gun use here. In one particular study, the authors reported an almost 75% increase in maximum blood flow velocity one minute after foam rolling, and it was sustained at about 53% increase 30 minutes later. Now those sound like significant numbers, except when you compare them to actually using your muscles. The studies undertaken in the 1980s that used the same Doppler ultrasound techniques to measure blood flow changes in humans are still cited today. In particular, studies looked at the maximum blood flow velocity that occurs within the quadriceps following a relaxation of a short isometric contraction, i.e. effort that contracts the muscle but doesn't move your knee joint. At contraction efforts as low as 20% of the subject's voluntary maximum for only 5 seconds, blood flow velocities upon relaxation were measured at 4 to 5 times baseline. When the same contraction was held and released after 30 seconds, blood flow velocities reached 7 to 8 times baseline. That's an 800% increase. It makes the 75% increase due to foam rolling and presumably something similar for percussion therapy look a little less impressive now, right? Finally, let's take a look at the one piece of research that Therabody have published on their site, the use of Theragun to improve sleep. There are a few things to note here. First, this isn't a published paper. It's an infographic. So no critique can be made on the methods or interpretation of the results. Second, this is not an academic peer-reviewed study. It's a study conducted by Bootstrap Labs, a commercial outfit who claim to provide a science-based resource to wellness companies that want to validate product claims easily, affordably, and with the participation of an engaged user base. So definitely no conflict of interest in producing favorable results for their customers then. Good. No one is going to argue that improving sleep quality is likely to have a positive effect on all aspects of performance and recovery. In fact, appropriate sleep quality and quantity is anecdotally reported to be the single best recovery strategy available to elite athletes. But that's not the point here. The point is 
Is it really worth spending £550 or a grand on percussion massages in order to improve sleep quality by single digit percentage points? And are the results even relevant to real life and other options? I'm actually going to entirely disregard the health, performance and recovery results reported in this infographic because, as I've already pointed out, that's exactly what sleep improves. It's quite clear from the literature that improvements can be made in someone's sleep quality simply from educating them in sleep hygiene and having them establish a routine. Two components of this study that are effective and do not require a Theragun to achieve. Of course, this study doesn't appear to have had a control group whose sleep efficiency was measured during the same protocol but without the Theragun. I wonder why. Let's look at the reported figures directly. Four minutes reduced sleep latency, i.e. the time it took to fall asleep. What's the baseline? We're not told, of course, so I went digging. In a very useful observational study of sleep parameters in elite athletes versus controls, controls are falling asleep in a range of two to seven minutes. So a four minute reduction could be quite significant. You could even be asleep before you get into bed. But elite athletes were taking up to 40 minutes to fall asleep sometimes. A four minute reduction in exchange for completing a protocol that presumably lasted longer than four minutes, again, we're not told, isn't a very good example of time efficiency, something I suspect is rather important to elite athletes. Increased sleep efficiency is reported as less awakenings or sleep disruptions and Therabody proudly report a 7% average decrease in awakenings. Let me put that into context for you. You would have to be waking up an average of 14 times per night to benefit from avoiding a single event of sleep disruption. If you're waking up every 34 minutes during the night, you need more help than a Theragun. Statistical significance and real world significance are often different beasts. As for the overall sleep score, all we're told is that half the cohort improved their score and that the improvement was statistically significant. I think I've made my point about statistical significance. Until we see data, we can probably assume that the chances that you or I will improve our sleep scores using this protocol is similar to that of the toss of a coin. And even then, we might not even notice the difference. Of course, the Therabody University course wraps up the whole thing nicely by reminding massage therapists of the importance of flushing the area following percussion therapy for trigger points and ensuring the client hydrates properly post-treatment. Enough said. So what does this tell us the best use for massage guns is? Quite simply, for feeling better in the short term. Yes, they can provide increases in range of movement, reduced pain and potentially a psychological edge in preparedness. These are all important, but are all short term and can be achieved by a free of charge warm up or a cheap foam roller. There is no evidence to suggest that percussion therapy would be more successful at achieving these outcomes. Also, there is no evidence to suggest that you need to be paying anything like the high prices being charged for top of the line percussion tools. The claims that brands make that they have dialed in specific frequencies, amplitude, torque and tool attachments to achieve the best outcomes from treatment appear to be entirely without merit. Having something cheap and cheerful to use as a novel stimulus from time to time isn't a bad idea, but until there's some actual science to back it up, don't believe the marketing hype around massage guns. Congratulations if you've made it this far in the video. If you have any interest in following up on some of my research or giving me a critique, all of the references I've used are in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ding the bell. And if you have any topics that you want me to cover or look into or do in this kind of way, then do leave a comment. I will respond. It would be great to hear what you're looking for next. And I'll see you in the next video.